Welcome to the Fun Astrology and Merriman Market Analyst podcasts. We're running this on both channels because we had a special sit-down interview with Ray Merriman about the 2024 forecast book that was recently released, not only in print, but also in audio that I've had the privilege to narrate the past two years now. So we have an audio version and a print version. And this year we decided to keep it all at home because that's how Ray has delivered basically all of his material is just direct sales through his website, MMACycles.com. So now the audiobook is also sold and delivered right from there. So the way this works is the print version includes the mundane part and the financial forecast for 2024. The audiobook is just the mundane part, not the financial. And one of the reasons for that is the financial is more technical and you really need to be sitting down where you can take notes and you map out a game plan. The mundane is the big 10,000 foot overview of the year. And like Ray has mentioned in the weekly column that it's a great opportunity to just re-listen and reabsorb the information of these key themes that are going to be going on astrologically in 2024 and beyond. And this book actually extends all the way out to about 2032. So without further ado, let's welcome back to the podcast, man who has been putting astrology and financial analysis together since the early 70s, Ray Merriman. Thank you, Thomas. It's good to be back with you on my solar return 2023. Yes, and just to tell everybody, Ray finished the book, which is about a three month writing project in and of itself. And then he took off for Hawaii to celebrate his birthday, which is on Christmas Day. I emailed him before he left and said, hey, could we do a podcast this week? And he said, well, I'm leaving for Hawaii. And I said, well, <laughs> what about X in such a time? So the man is working on his holiday vacation after just expending three months. Ray is a double Capricorn, and this is where you can't make this stuff up. The man is still working. That's right. <laughs> every day I work, well, let's put it this way, every day I wake up, I'm excited about going to uh, to work, which is basically writing for me. Yeah, that's what I do every day. Wake up to write and see what comes out of the, uh, out of the uh, universal mind that hopefully channels into my own mind. That's my goal every day. You guys just got a key to success right there. Take note of that one. And this, if I remember, is the 48th year for the forecast book. Is that right? 48? That's correct. Yeah. All right. Let's jump in. 2024 forecast book pretty much begins at the beginning because the first aspect of 2024 is Pluto re-entering Aquarius. And because Pluto moves so slowly, that means that it will be sitting at zero degrees Aquarius and then moving back and forward over it again in retrograde in 2024. So you use the term, coined the term new era to represent this and other things that have happened in the air signs. Yeah. The, uh, the new era, by the way, is a, is a phrase that was coined originally by Cat Powell, an astrologer, market analyst, um, to reflect the Jupiter-Saturn uh, mutation that occurred in December 21st, 2020, when Jupiter and Saturn crossed over into Aquarius on the same day the, the uh, sun moved into the winter solstice. And so that zero Aquarius becomes what I call a supercharged degree. Any conjunction becomes a supercharged degree, especially when it involves Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, or Jupiter, Saturn. So there's seven possibilities here, a supercharged degree. This is number seven. But it's an important one because it's the first time Jupiter and Saturn started the series into air signs consecutively. We had one in 1980, but now we get consecutive ones for the next 140 years. So this is the start of the air epic or the new era, zero degrees Aquarius. And the first step after that is Pluto crossing zero Aquarius. Now, one thing I want to point out is that sometimes these aspects and supercharged degrees actually start their influence before the supercharged degree becomes exact. So Jupiter, Saturn moved into zero Aquarius, December 21st, 2020. But Saturn had already hit zero Aquarius for a couple months, starting in March of 2020. And you remember what happened then. That was the whole COVID pandemic. And then it kind of looked like it was getting better. And then it came back with a vengeance after that. And, uh, and uh, so now we see that every time a major planet hits Jupiter 
Saturn conjunction point is zero Aquarius, something big happens. And Pluto hit it last March. It went into Aquarius. March to June, we had the banking crisis. We also had the explosion of the AI, the artificial intelligence excitement that is driving the new age economy, if you will. And now it's kind of leveled off a little bit. Inflation's leveled off a little bit. Uh, the banking crisis seems to be over. Everybody's calling for a soft landing now. But here we come again, starting next month through most of 2024, Pluto's going back into zero Aquarius. So it's going to be another very, very powerful, transformative year, probably involving a lot of events, a lot of circumstance, a lot of decision-making, uh, just as intense as it was from 2020 to 2023. we got another big one coming up. Okay, and we don't get into the financial part in this or the audio book. That's saved for the full book in the whole financial section. Yes. But the audio book does cover the entire mundane portion. And the next event that we have coming up next year is the full solar eclipse. That's on April 8th at 2.20 p.m. Eastern. The sun and moon together at 19 degrees, 24 minutes Aries. So are you, are you going to go uh, eclipse viewing somewhere? I'm probably of the minority here amongst astrology astrologers. I don't go chasing eclipses. I run away from them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, I'd rather see them in my ephemeris. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's spectacular to see out there, but you know, when the eclipse occurs, uh, you do a chart for where you are at that moment. And that's your chart also for the, that eclipse cycle. So I don't make a, a big deal personally of uh, trying to be anywhere for the eclipse. So I'll probably be in Arizona, maybe Florida. So uh, I won't be chasing the eclipse. I want to say this about the eclipse. This is a very powerful and a significant eclipse for many reasons. The most important, I think, is because it's going to conjunct Chiron. Okay. You got the eclipse conjunct Chiron. And, and basically it's, it's conjunct the North Node. So I went back and looked in history. You know, the, when Chiron conjuncts the North or South Node, about 80% of the time, the U.S. does enter recession within within the year. Everybody's saying there's going to be a soft landing and the inflation's under control. They're all, you can see the markets are going like wildfire right now. They're exploding. I'm not so sure. I mean, I, I can see the political implications of what the, the government is trying to do. I figured that out, I think. You know, they, they want to see inflation come down so they can bring the mortgage rates come down so young people and everybody can actually afford to buy a home and people start selling their homes again because there's a tight market. So the way to solve that is for the Federal Reserve and the government to keep working this inflation rate and the mortgage rates down, I would think, to about 5.5% before the election. But there's a danger in that because once that happens, there's going to be a lag effect shortly thereafter they have to time it just right because that is inflationary that's gonna be inflation all over again so the fed reserve is right that the inflation battle is not over it's temporarily subdued but if they continue on this course and you know they made a sudden pivot just what last week suddenly they have room now to consider lowering interest rates going into the election uh which i think is very fascinating but if they don't time this just right there's going to be inflation, right, you know, going into the election or shortly thereafter. I know they want it to be shortly thereafter. They're counting on a lag time for inflation. So I think they're going to risk that to maintain the power of the White House, of the government. And it's it's going to be a tricky tightrope act again as you get into late 2024, early 2025, because if it's not timed just right and managed just right, you know, you got inflation factors coming back again. Now, the astrology of this eclipse is interesting, too, because you have all of the planets stacked into three signs, basically, with a super stellium in Aries where the eclipse is. So does that make this even more ominous? Well, it, it definitely gives it, you know, uh, an extra force. Anytime you get an eclipse making a, a hard aspect to another planet, especially conjunction or opposition, or as you say, when you get a lot of planets, you know, uh, compressed, um, Andre Barbot used to use that in his um, cyclical finder to identify uh, critical turning points to the economy. And also he used that to forecast the, uh, the, the COVID 
uh, pandemic that came in 2020. He's the only astrologer I know who really forecasted that, and he did it in 2012. He said when all these planets come together within about a, a trine aspect, when all the planets within a trine, that's the time that you're susceptible to uh, upheavals in the economy, uh, geopolitical world, and uh, possibilities of pandemic. So I, I think we're moving out of the pandemic phase. We're not completely out of that till Saturn's done with Neptune. But as this expands, as Jupiter gets out of Taurus into Gemini, starts going toward Cancer, you're you're leaving that that tight orb. Uh, what do we call a? It's not a bucket. I, I think it may be called a bundle pattern of, with Mark Edmund Jones uh, and his seven uh, horoscope types. So yeah, that's intensification. Everything is focused. Uh, everybody is locked into their position. But as the planets start moving, as Jupiter starts getting out of Taurus after May uh, and starts moving out. And Uranus starts moving toward Gemini too. Uh, you're going to see the open-mindedness uh, start to increase again, I believe, and I think that would be good for world uh, and societies. Well, and then that's the next aspect is on April 20th, Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus at 9:03 p.m. Eastern. And you've said that of all the aspects next year, of everything taking place next year astrologically, this is the big one affecting the financial markets. Yeah. So understand that Jupiter expands, you know, uh, it exaggerates, it makes things, it's growth. Everything wants to expand and grow and be bigger and be the biggest and the best. And then you got Uran Uranus, which is like a stick of dynamite. You know, it's like, it's going to, it's also going to supercharge the nature of, of uh, Jupiter. So when you get Jupiter and Uranus together, you have the potential for big breakouts, if not reversals than big breakouts to new all-time highs. I think we're already starting to see that in the stock market, many of the stock markets of the world, the United States, India, Germany, Japan's getting close to it. But a lot of uh, a lot of stock markets are being um, amplified right now uh, into the into a blow-off, and I think it's going to go right into that uh, Jupiter-Uranus. We, sh we should, we normally get a correction before then, you know, good... 8 to 12 percent correction maybe before then before this and then another big move up into the aspect or maybe even after that is jupiter sextiles uh neptune and trines pluto in late may early june and jupiter's going into gemini but remember what jupiter and taurus is stability i mean as far as the finances go even though we had our banking crisis when jupiter was in aries when it went into taurus it was solved by the time we got to may of last year it was solved there were no more interest rate hikes, except one when Venus went retrograde by a quarter percent. And it's been stable since then. And I think it's going to stay stable, or if they bring it down, it's only going to be a quarter percent. It's going to be very modest. But when Jupiter goes into Gemini, everything changes again. You're done with your Jupiter conjunct Uranus. You're done with your Jupiter sextile, Neptune, trine Pluto. You're moving into Jupiter and Gemini, which, by the way, can be a new all-time high, too. But usually there's a very strong decline happening then because not only is Jupiter going into Gemini, but for the, from August to June, August 2024, 20, June 25, it's going to square Saturn. So we're moving from all these soft, harmonious aspects of Jupiter to the hard aspect of Saturn after we get to August. And so sometime in there, I think the United States uh, economy, the stock market, are going to meet a bigger challenge than they have since the bank failures that we had back in March of 2023 when Pluto first entered Aquarius, zero degrees. Wow. You know, that obviously would affect us individually. Do you see any other individual or collective effects from this aspect? Well, it, again, take the principles. I mean, Jupiter exaggerates, Uranus disrupts. So there is, on a positive side, I think this parabolic increase you see in ai being applied um to businesses um and to society um i think it continues this parabolic rise and becomes very a lot new a lot of new applications happen at the same time there are some there's some problems with that too because as we get more and more adept at using ai to make businesses and governments function more efficiently, which it will, there becomes less of a need to employ people in those positions that AI, robotics can do. 
So it's going to be a huge displacement of the workforce coming up. And I think you'll start seeing that from probably from around that time, Jupiter conjunct Uranus, but it's going to continue into the middle of the decade, maybe even the early part of the next decade till Saturn conjuncts Uranus. So a tremendous displacement in government uh, inefficiencies with new efficiencies coming in with AI and in terms of corporate and business enterprise, even small businesses are going to start adopting more and more usefulness of uh, AI and eliminate the need for, you know, um, low skilled manual labor uh, in those positions that robotics can do. So it would be quite, it'd be quite an impact. I suppose beyond that, Jupiter in Uranus in Taurus, Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus is a revolutionary uh, theme. You know, the last time it happened was the Arab Spring Uprising uh, in 2000, what, 10, 2011. So here we are, we're getting this again in 2000, maybe it was 2012. Uh, but here it is 12 years later, 13 years later, Jupiter is going to, you know, hit Uranus. It's going to be in Taurus hitting Uranus. Uh, back then it was in Aries. But I think there's still a lot of, there's a lot of the people who are not happy with their lack of freedoms and rights in the world. And that's going to become the basis, I think, for more revolutionary fervor, especially as Jupiter gets into Gemini, squaring Saturn. You know, these are, these. this is a time where the governments are not in, they're not, they're not popular. Uh, so you got Jupiter Rance, which is revolutionary intent, the revolutionary thought, followed by Jupiter square Saturn, which is now they're discontent. They're not, they're not as successful. They're not as, satisfied uh, as they were before and so i think you see a uh, a movement here toward toward more um independence and human rights coming up and that would fit also with pluto and aquarius wouldn't it i mean that's the the masses having this urge this almost obsession that it's got to change we can't go on this way or we can't afford living we can't afford housing the people want their power back and they, they don't want the government just to do it based on an election cycle. <laughs> they want to go beyond an election cycle. So it's all, you know, Thomas, it's all heading toward what I call the Aries vortex. And we can talk about that when you're ready to, because I think that's the most important thing coming up this decade. Yes. And before we get there, I just wanted to ask you this, because Uranus typically in astrology rules astrology. Yeah. So could that mean that this aspect might actually result in an expansion of astrology in the collective okay so it's pluto in aquarius going over the jupiter saturn jupiter's education saturn is you know the structure of education uh pluto is the upheaval of the structure of education in aquarius is going to affect astrology you know i've been very active for 50 years of my life in community service for astrology um, I've president of VSAR three different times for two times a six-year cycle, once a two-year, and then half of the third cycle where I transformed, transferred it to uh, Alexander M. Surajic, who did an excellent job too. So I know about the importance of the world community of astrology and the role that our organizations, especially here in America, but also Great Britain uh, and Germany and Switzerland, that we all played in that. We transformed astrology from a hobby to a profession. Prior to the 1990s, as you know, astrology was an illegal in many states in the United States. You were, you were basically a hobbyist or you're doing it under the table, so to speak, until we got it legalized, which we started that process in the early 1980s. We finally succeeded through AFAN uh, in, 19, in the early 1990s. So... You asked me about how this is going to affect astrology. Well, that was the golden era of astrology, I think, from the 80s, probably to about 2010. Then it transformed into followers of social media. Okay, Astrology became accessible through social media and through the Internet. Prior to that, we were developing the importance of education. Now, I see a conflict coming up here in the field of astrology between the organizationals, organizations control of the direction astrology is taken versus the educational venues, the colleges uh, of the world of astrology. And I see it shifting. I see it shifting from an organizational power base to an educational 
college, university, where astrology is taught. That's where you're getting a schism going on here. You know, there's the astrology that you learn through the internet, uh, through social media, that doesn't require any kind of formal training in astrology versus the growing educational venues that are offered by these universities and, and uh, colleges in astrology where you are getting trained. So you know if this person's trained, getting a diploma, maybe they're getting certified through the organizations, and that will change too. But then you know, you know, these are trained astrologers. Those on the internet, they may be very, very good or they may not be. You just have no way of knowing it if they haven't got a, uh, a formal education in astrology. So I see that shifting, that organizational uh, control, if you will, based of power and the direction where astrology has gone that we were that we built from the 1980s to 2010, 2020. I see that shifting more toward a coalition of the of the, the universities and colleges and the individuals even who are teaching astrology and giving diplomas, preparing people for the profession of astrology, becoming more and more an important force in the professionalism in the career of astrology. I see that happening with Pluto going into Aquarius, that transition. Excellent. Glad to hear that, too. All right, let's talk about the big one now. February 20th, 2026, the Aries Vortex, that's Saturn and Neptune conjoining at zero degrees, Aries. Yeah. That's the big one. That's uh, so. Then let's put this in context now. So you got the new era that started with 2020, the Jupiter Saturn going into zero Aquarius, the pandemic, the uh, upheaval of the uh, world economy, and then it ends. That whole thing that began in in December 2020, Jupiter conjunct Saturn in zero Aquarius, ends uh, in the summer. I think it's the summer of 2032, 12 years later, when Jupiter gets back to zero Aquarius. So it's a Jupiter return. It's also the year Saturn conjuncts Uranus, which is this, the most important geocosmic signature for mundane astrology that I've come across in my lifetime. I think any other astrologers who studied mundane uh, work would probably agree with me that Saturn Uranus is the big <laughs> alpha in the room, the big daddy of astrology when it comes to mundane uh, geopolitical effects. So it's a 12-year cycle. The new era is 2020 and 2032. Right in the middle of that is 2026. And in the middle of that, as you mentioned, is when Saturn conjuncts Neptune at zero Aries. And it's not only that it's zero Aries, but it's also Uranus and Pluto. Uh, Uranus is going to Gemini. Pluto is going into Aquarius. And they're trying. So the midpoint of that from tw middle 2025 through 20, actually through 2026, 2027, the midpoint of that is also zero Aries. So you got Saturn and Neptune lined up with the uh, vernal equinox point. You got Uranus and Pluto midpoint lined up with the vernal equinox point. This is a funnel or a vortex of energy. And it's like going, it's like the world is going into this vortex, it's going into the abyss. We're falling on the one hand in terms of our division amongst each other, nationally, racially, socially, uh, whatever identity you want to ascribe to. We are, this this diversion has become diversity, it has become division. We're, we're, we're becoming very separated. And this is peaking. This is peaking when we reach the bottom of this division we realize that, hey, all this diversity serves a purpose, and that is to us recognize that we share things in common, too, and we start coming out of it. As I see it, we start coming out of it. Once we reach that, the bottom of the black hole, if you will, the bottom of the vortex, the bottom of the abyss, which is 2025, 2026, we slowly begin to get, I think, glimmers of hope that, bring, that starts focusing the attention, the momentum, back to the things we share in common. We start building blocks to, on how to build our world community in terms of our unity, not our division. And I think that will continue it's, uh, until we get to 2032. Then we, then I think we burst out of it. But that's what I see it. I see us, you know, we're already in the downswing, if you will, of, of uh, satisfaction, of uh, contentment in life. I mean, if you look at all of the surveys all over the world, the majority of people feel that the world and their nation, especially the United States, has on the wrong path, even though we have more prosperity. The stock markets are an all-time high. We have more of that than ever before, yet people are more depressed. 
they're more anxiety ridden than ever before. Why is that? Well, because they're kind of isolated in their own little groups. They're not connected to all these other groups to they share things, some things in common with they, that they don't want to recognize or have yet to fully recognize. That's changing, I think. Once we get to the Aries vortex, that begins to change as we come out of it. I can't wait to see what happens as we come out of that funnel and start seeing these new choices and start making these choices in the uh, belief that it's unity that's going to be our salvation, not diversity. Diversity is important to recognize the, you know, the colorful nature of our humanity, but it's got to be within the context of unity. And I think we're going to start making that uh, shift during that time. Wow. I love the positive spin because there's so much gloom and doom out there now. And it just keeps increasing. And that's that's part of the Aries vortex. It just keeps increasing. But don't forget also, Aries is the beginning. Pisces is the end, Aries beginning. So we're coming out of that whole Pisces into the Aries. And not only is it Aries, I mean, we got zero, we got zero Aquarius we talked about being so important, which is a future. Aquarius is a sign of the future. But Aries is also the, a beginning too. So we got all these new beginnings. Uh, that are being messaged to us by the cosmos. And it's just a matter of us being able to recognize that and and uh, and have hope, because without hopelessness, we just have despair and depression. So we, we do need hope, and I think these are aspects of hope that uh, we can look forward to uh, in terms of our collective consciousness. Wow, you got me excited. <laughs> it's like, let's roll. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's get there. <laughs> And I highlighted one paragraph from the book. You mentioned the four areas that you just beautifully described. Yeah. And then you said the Aries vortex of 2025 and 2026 has never happened according to yeah. our database. Yeah, we got data going back at least 4,000 BC. We've never had a Saturn Neptune uh, conjunction of zero Aries with Uranus Pluto midpoint hitting it. Yeah, this combination, stressing zero areas, has never happened before. Then you also mention all of the outer planets changing signs within two and a half years. Well, that's a big deal, too. I brought that up even in the 2023 book. I mean, you got Pluto going into Aquarius. Of course, that was there when our American Revolution began. It, was, it Pluto went into Aquarius, I think it was April of 1777. Well, we had just begun the American Revolution 10 months before that, nine months before that. Neptune goes into Aries, uh, April 12th or 13th, 2025. The last time that happened was, I think it was also April of uh, 1861. It was the day before the Civil War began, within one day of the Civil War. Uh, so that's the last time Neptune went into Aries. And, and then we got Uranus and Gemini. The last time that happened was August, I believe it was August 7th, 1941. Maybe it was a little later. It says August of 41. Within four months, the United States is in World War III. So the last time these three outermost planets enter the signs they're going to enter into between 2023 and 2025 were the three most important wars of our uh, country. So it goes without saying, just based upon that, the astrology suggests the United States is in a, a war cycle and it's going to require all of their, their best minds and uh, uh, diplomatic efforts to have a soft landing in terms of the geopolitical world and not to enter a war. I don't know how you, you do that. Uh, I'm not, you know, my, my path in life is not the, uh, the path of the, uh, the warrior, so to speak, at least not in the physical sense. So, you know, those who are adept at the warrior game, hopefully they figure it out how to not put those who, of us who don't want to be in the warrior game uh, lives at risk. You know, and that's always a danger. You know, the collateral damage they seem to think is acceptable to, uh, to uh, you know, make vulnerable to expose human lives of civilians, children, uh, elderly people who have no no urge to fight. You know, they're they're they deserve the right to have the full human experience. And if you're going to play the war game and make everybody else involved in it, whether they want to or not. There's something not right about that. And that's also part of this Aries vortex, because Aries is the war, you know, zero. But maybe with the Uranus, Pluto, Neptune hitting that Saturn, I'm sorry, Uranus, Pluto, yeah, midpoint hitting that Saturn, Neptune midpoint, uh, maybe, and I'm hopeful, that they will decide no more war. They'll figure a way out of it. And one more thing I want to say about that, too, is 
some of the aggressors of what's going on in the world today where human lives are used as fodder to a, you know to 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 assist you know people in powers of control who don't want to use lose that position of control and i'm speaking mostly of of russia at this point but i think it probably involves other nations too that there is a cycle the saturn neptune cycle is the urge for peace you know to to end that aggression to end that autocracy and to be more compassionate in the government, Saturn, Neptune, Saturn government, Neptune, compassionate, be more compassionate, be more respectful and give young people uh, the chance to live a full rewarding life instead of living in fear and anxiety all their life. I think that's a 36 year cycle and that comes up also in 2026, just like it did in 1989, just like it did in 1952, 53, when Stalin died and Putin was born and so was Xi Jinping. Just like in 1917, when you had the Bolshevik Revolution and Pluto imploded. Just like 1882, where Tsar Alexander was uh, assassinated and Russia imploded. I think you're going to see um, aspects and, and themes like that come up. Uh, 2025, 2026, 2027, sometime, let's say 2026, give or take a year. Big, big change in that uh, direction of uh, attention being given uh, to the world control right now. Yeah, let's see if that cycle repeats. I mean, it's, it's been good for the last four or five cycles. And I know uh, many people like myself are hoping that uh, uh, that, that, that is cyclical and that does return and that it does transform the war machine, if you will, or the war themes, the war games to some something that is less dangerous to civilians who aren't part of that, of their spiritual path. Yeah. I've got a lot of water in my chart, and you've touched my heart when you said that we should all be born with the right to experience the human condition fully. Yeah, absolutely. It should not, it should not be taken away from them just because a few... Um, madmen i don't know how to explain it otherwise a few madmen who think it's okay in war everything's fair in the, in war i don't think everything is fair in war we got we got conventions we got uh, international treaties we got international laws on how you fight wars and uh you know even if if those were at least followed you know we could survive and those people who are being born into <laughs> into this earth plane would have a chance they would have a chance to contribute to the evolution of the world, not only their own evolution, but the evolution of the of the of the whole collective. You know, we need these people being born to be nurtured, to be the best that they can be. And that's not possible when they live in terror and fear that any moment their life could be taken away because of, you know, these these individuals who are part of a group whose purpose is the elimination of other individuals on the earth. That's, that's, a, that's a, a, a terrible, terrible life path to choose to follow, to eliminate, to kill other people. And hopefully the Saturn Neptune brings us to a higher level of spiritual consciousness. That's a possibility. That's the promise of Saturn Neptune, spiritual law, spiritual universal values and goals. And it's hitting in zero areas, so there's a there's a whole new attitude I think that's beginning to sprout, mushroom up, if you will, from uh, from this period. And I'm I'm I am hopeful of it. I mean, I'm always looking for signs of hope. This is a sign of hope that I see. We just need to be patient, work on our survival, work on our own individual individual development till we get there, and, and then hopefully this this next next epidemic will be an epidemic of a consciousness of respectability for human life and the rights that all humans deserve to live by, just as we have in our constitution. They're not constitution, our declaration of independence. Everybody has a right uh, to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And I believe that fully. Amen and amen. So as you look out at 2024 and then at 2025, people right now are nervous. They're hurting. A lot of people are anxious. People are saying the election might even be in jeopardy. Are we even going to have one? Will it be fair? When you look at 2024 and then you look out at 2025, do you see more challenges in one of those two years over the other? Oh, that's a good question. 
Well, I, I think it's there's there's a great deal of the unknown of danger and opportunity, as we say, <laughs> as the Chinese say, uh, between the election and the inauguration. Okay, that's a very, very critical period. And for the United States to move into this seamlessly, it requires the acceptance of the election results. And the danger is that neither side is going to accept the election results. Bear in mind, on election day, Mars has just moved into Leo. Pluto is in the last minutes of Capricorn. So they're in opposition right on that border of the Leo Aquarius opposition, Mars opposite Pluto. It also happened to hit uh, Zelensky's NATO Mars for you know Ukraine. I, that's a, it's a, a risky time for them too. So will the election be accepted or will it be contested? It appears to me it's going to be contested. Mars opposed Pluto doesn't want to admit defeat. I mean, that's like, you know, whatever it takes to win, we're going to do it. Each side is going to feel that way. I don't think you're going to outrig Donald Trump. <laughs> okay. I mean, if he felt that it was a rigged election, and he always feels any election going into it is a rigged election. I mean, he's the ultimate uh, sus uh, subscriber to the idea of rigged election. It's not going to change. He's going to go into this election the same way. But I don't think it's just him. I think the Democrats are going to feel the same way because Donald Trump understands now the way to win the election isn't on election day. It's on the absentee ballot. That all started with Barack Obama. I mean, up until then, maybe what? 15% of the people, 16%, something like that, did absentee ballots. Under Obama, it jumped to 30-some 30, 30 percent. Obama didn't win on election day. It was tight, but McCain won by like a percent. But prior to that, Obama had 58 percent of the absentee ballots. And suddenly the Democrats had the key. Aha, let's do the absentee ballots. Let's focus on absentee ballots. And now it's even more than 30 percent of people vote by absentee ballots. Trump knows this. So you're going to see... On both sides of the aisle, you're going to see dead people rising up from the grave and voting. <laughs> okay, There's going to be a lot of zombie voters this time, and both sides, I think, are going to complain. And I think the election will be um, contested. And I think what happens between Election Day and the inauguration is very, very important. I think we will get through it. I don't know if the inauguration will take place on time this year, um, but I think there will be an election. I think it will be hotly contested. But the results may not be known by, by inauguration. They will be known as we get into 2025, though. Uh, I don't know how far into it, but I think the election results will be known. Uh, so you know, you ask me, which is a, the more difficult year? Well, it's actually that period, late 2024, early 25, that's our biggest challenge as a, as a government. Yeah. When I was a cub reporter back in my hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma, working for a television station, I was assigned at age 23 to go cover the vote fraud trial of the Oklahoma State Speaker of the House, wow. who was being tried for vote fraud charges for buying votes from the Cherokee Indians in eastern Oklahoma with whiskey. Whoa. So I guess I learned at 23 that... <laughs> <laughs> now you probably have to bribe them with fentanyl, unfortunately. Yeah, something else, but... <laughs> get them out of the encampments and get them into the voting booth. <laughs> the, the means may have changed, but the bribing has not. No. I mean, we're born with... The country's born with Mars, we're Neptune. You know, it's in Gemini and Virgo. And uh, I don't think you can... I don't know how you're going to get a totally free election results that haven't been uh, tainted in some way. But, you know, I I think what you're going to find is you go, if, if you really did have the means to to investigate these things, you'll find it, it goes on on both sides. It will now. I don't know. I know the Republicans feel now we're honest and the Democrats cheat. The Democrats, you know, feel these are for elections. I mean, the point is, I think from now on, both sides are going to do whatever they got to do. I mean, what did Trump say when he called the uh, uh, the Secretary of State of, of, of Georgia? Find me a, a 11,000 more votes. Well, how do you find 11,000 more votes? <laughs> you know, and the same thing happened in 2004 with the Chads. You know, I mean, there's 
you're not going to get a, a, a 100% accurate election result. Hopefully that that the uh, the errors are even on both sides, or at least close enough on both sides, so that we we have to have some means to accept it. Because if we don't accept our elections, what is democracy? I mean, uh, we are a republic more than democracy, but we depend upon democratic principles to operate our republic. And the key to democratic principles operating a republic is the right to vote. So we have to we have to get to some kind of understanding acceptance of these election results or we we just doom ourselves and i'm sure that's what all our our enemies who 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 want us are undoing are, are hoping that we will unravel from within which is just what abraham lincoln predicted 150 106 years ago the greatest danger to america isn't external it's within ourselves and you see that happening now and hopefully we don't ruin ourselves from within and this election will probably be the turning point because the next election will be past the Aries vortex. And I think we're starting to come out of the abyss. Well, you've done an amazing job of detailing all of this in the 2024 forecast book. Would you like to tell everybody about it from your perspective as the author? You mean this book? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the forecast 2024. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed writing this one. It's uh, I enjoyed writing all of them. To me, forecast season, which is basically October, and well, starts in September, October, very intense late October, December, November. Uh, this is a time for me to really get my own plan, my own strategy uh, set into effect. And so it was easy this time because I know what I want to focus on. I want everybody else to focus on is traders and investors is Jupiter Uranus. You know, this is a big opportunity coming into this. And so you know, you want to get the strategies are going to take advantage of markets uh, exploding into it, or if it happens to be a low at that time, exploding coming out of it. So I enjoyed writing it. I think it's a, a good year to develop a strategy. Basically, you want to be long, I think, going into these Jupiter transits of uh, harmonious ones to conjunction to Uranus, sextile Neptune, trying to Pluto. And then you want to be looking for tops as Jupiter goes into Gemini. And for a big, big pullback as Jupiter then goes to square Saturn. It's going like from favorable, harmonious aspects to the difficult, challenging square aspect. We'll make it through the square because the waxing square, which is like birth, you know, it's like the pain of birth. You know, you have a challenge here, but you, you're going to overcome it. You're not going to, you're not going to uh, come to an end with it here. So I enjoyed writing this. I was very inspired. I felt inspired and I hope the, uh, the contents of the book inspire those of you who are able to purchase it and read it. Well, I thought it was excellent. Seriously, if you're interested in mundane astrology, this is a must, and it's probably the best analysis you're going to find. And I want to thank you, Thomas, for actually broadcasting it into an audio format. It's the second year that we've done an audio format, and thanks to your genius, we figured out how to do it ourselves now. And so, you know, having the book read to you read to me <laughs> while I while I walk, while I work out, while I'm driving. It's just a joy to listen to your voice and get these ideas solidified in my mind and hopefully the reader's mind uh, as they make their own strategies for 2024. So thank you, Thomas. Well, you're most welcome. And thank you for the opportunity to work with you and the MMA team. Love the quality of your work and the longevity of your work. There's double Capricorn going. But I'm sure that now that we have this captured and can do it ourselves and just keep it at home, that uh, many more years to come, hopefully. That's right. <laughs> as long as I can write, I'm going to write this book. I love writing it. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy reading it. Oh, I thoroughly did. And I'll tell you, I put it on over the weekend preparing for this interview. And I was listening to it. And I thought, dang, this is really good. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> Your voice brings it greatly to life. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. hope people well, will you. consider both, actually, the print version and the audio book. The print version includes the financial part. The audio book is just the mundane. Ray, thank you so much, and thank you for letting me be a part of your world. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Thomas, and I'm glad you are a part of our world. And uh, it's been enjoyable, and I hope to continue this path with you for a long, long time. Thank you very much. The 2024 forecast book is available from MMACycles.com in audio, and also I put the direct link to that on my new venture, HighTimelineBooks.com. 
just a convenience gets you to the same place. Either way, MMACycles.com or HighTimelineBooks.com will get you there. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you inside the audiobook.